take a large barrel. Let them put into it however much material they believe is required to form a living thing. For example, let them include all the needed elements, carbon, phosphorus, calcium. Let them go even further and place amino acids and proteins, not one of which could possibly have come into being by chance, into this barrel. Then let them subject this mixture to all kinds of external influences. For example, heat or chill the barrel. Let it be struck by lightning or apply electric current. Let them stir the substances they have placed into the barrel with whatever devices they choose, for as long as they choose, at whatever speed they choose. In addition, let them stand guard on this barrel, transferring this responsibility from father to son for millions, even billions of years. Let them consult with others, meet with the world's foremost biologists, geneticists, physicists, and experts on evolution. The result will never be any different. Despite all this serious conscious effort, they'll never be able to produce anything like a living being in that barrel. No matter what they do, they'll never be able to produce the wide variety of birds, multicolored fish, rabbits, horses, or other animals from inside that barrel. Despite they're all growing in the same soil and being watered with the same water, they can never, ever produce fruits, which all taste so very different to one another. Let those atoms in that barrel perform any reactions they want, Never will they produce brilliant scientists like Einstein and Newton able to solve complex problems. Artists like Michelangelo and Picasso able to create masterpieces. Musicians like Beethoven and Mozart able to compose melodies to delight the human spirit. Discoverers, scientists able to examine under electron microscopes the molecules and atoms out of which they themselves are composed or consider those able to design automobiles and write books, thinkers with faculties of logic and judgment, human beings able to retain in memory what they have learned, share longings, feel excitement and pleasure, who are possessed with a sense of love, mercy and compassion, who enjoy the taste of food and who can defend an idea. If so, if no living thing can ever be produced by human effort, and the whole pool of human knowledge. How can life be brought into being with the aid of unconscious atoms and chance events? All the positive sciences of the 20th century very clearly, definitively, and irrefutably proved that not a single living cell can be produced in the laboratory by bringing inanimate substances together, let alone by chance. If life exists, then it must have a creator. Even if billions of inanimate substances come together, they can never come alive by themselves or possess consciousness. It is God with his superior intellect, infinite knowledge, and matchless power who creates all these entities. Your Lord is God, who created the heavens and the earth in six days, and then settled himself firmly on the throne. He covers the day with the night, each pursuing the other urgently, and the sun and the moon and stars are subservient to his command. Both creation and command belong to him. Blessed be God, the Lord of all the worlds.
The formation of the universe and its rate of expansion, the location of the Earth in the Milky Way, the kind of light emitted by the sun, the viscosity of water, the levels of the gases in the atmosphere, and a great many other systems with their extraordinarily delicate balances show that the universe very definitely cannot be the product of chance. Every planet in the universe, large and small, is the critically important part of a larger order. Not one of their positions in space or any of their movements is random. On the contrary, their countless details known to us so far have been created and especially adjusted for a particular purpose. Of all the innumerable factors influencing the balances in the universe, a change in the position of just one planet is enough to bring chaos. But these balances are never upset. The universe continues on in its perfect order with no problems. All of this is a result of God's supreme power in creation. He who created the seven heavens in layers, you will not find any flaw in the creation of the all-merciful. Look again. Do you see any gaps? Then look again and again. Your sight will return to you, dazzled and exhausted. The universe's perfect structure led even Charles Darwin, the architect of the theory of evolution, to admit that there is no room for chance in its creation. As he wrote, This conviction in the existence of God follows from the extreme difficulty, or rather impossibility, of conceiving this immense and wonderful universe, including man with his capacity of looking far backwards and far into futurity as the result of blind chance or necessity. Another vitally important balance in the universe is the distance between the moon and the earth. That distance is of the greatest importance to the survival of life on Earth and in terms of the maintenance of many other balances. Indeed, the slightest variation in the distance between the two bodies could give rise to significant imbalances. For example, if the moon were much closer to the Earth, it would crash into our planet. If much farther away, it would move off into space. If it were much closer, the tides that the moon causes on the Earth would become dangerously larger. Ocean waves would sweep across low-lying sections of the continents. A more distant moon would reduce tidal action, making the oceans more sluggish. Stagnant water would endanger marine life, yet it is that very marine life that produces the oxygen that we breathe. That could lead to the disappearance of all life. The distribution of heavenly bodies in the universe is created exactly to conform to the needs of human life. These distances directly affect the orbits and even the existence of the planets. The distribution of the heavenly bodies in space and the huge empty spaces between them are essential to life on Earth. In his book, The Symbiotic Universe, American astronomer George Greenstein explains the importance of the distances between heavenly bodies. Had 